Following the end of World War II, the world saw an exponential rise in the number of serial killers. According to figures from Radford University, the number of global serial killers across the entirety of the 1940s was 100. In the 1950s, that number rose to 113. That number increased even more in the 1960s to 293. And during the 1970s, that number rose even more than ever to 765. Out of all the years during the 1970s, the year 1978 seemed to be the worst. Some had been killing for years, while others were just getting started. One of the most infamous serial killers, known as Ted Bundy, killed three of his last victims in 1978. This savage spell of violence led him to getting caught by police after a seven-year reign of terror that saw him kidnap, rape, torture, and murder more than 30 women. The year also led to the Hillside Stranglers killing their final victim as a deadly duo, and that body was discovered on February 17, 1978. The murders came to an abrupt stop, and after an exhaustive investigation, it led to the arrest of the deadly duo in 1979. The notorious John Wayne Gacy, or Clown Killer as he is known nowadays, was finally arrested on December 21, 1978. He had spent the previous six years snatching, raping, strangling, and burying young men and boys in the crawl space under his Chicago home. He was convicted of 33 murders, which was the most by any one individual at that time. Georgia's stalking strangler Carlton Gary was arrested after a year of killing elderly women. He was convicted and sent to prison but escaped in 1983. Following his recapture a year later, he remained in prison until his execution by lethal injection in March of 2018. Throughout the 1970s, Rodney Alcala murdered at least seven women across California and New York. In 1978, he made an appearance on a popular game show called The Dating Game. There he was introduced as a successful photographer. Little did anyone know at the time, but he actually had hundreds upon hundreds of sexually suggested photos of women, girls, and boys. One of the women in the photos was one of his murder victims. Eventually, about 20 families identified missing loved ones from the photos, but more than 100 are still out there and are unidentified. Alcala won the competition that day, and he won a date with Bachelorette Cheryl Bradshaw. Luckily, she had a bad feeling about him and stated that he was creepy, so she never went out on their date. In 1978, the BTK killer, now known as Dennis Rader, was in the middle of his murdering spree. He noticed all the attention that the other serial killers were getting, and he started getting jealous. He sent a letter into a television station in Wichita, Kansas, claiming the responsibility for three murders and demanding more media attention. Donald Harvey was an American serial killer who worked as an orderly in hospitals. He killed people who were terminally ill and insisted he killed purely out of empathy for the suffering, yet he also stated he killed out of anger at the victims. He was convicted of 37 murders, and he admitted to 87, but it is estimated that it was more like 40 to 57. Mary Beth Tinning was a serial killer in her own family. She murdered eight of her own children, including one that she adopted in 1978. She was only convicted of murdering her ninth child. The previous murders never had cases opened on them, and it was thought that it was just some sort of bad genetics as to why the children were dying. Richard Trenton Chase was an American serial killer, rapist, cannibal, and necrophile who killed six people in the span of a month from December 1977 to January 1978. Pedro Lopez is a Colombian serial killer and child killer. He was sentenced for killing 110 girls but claimed to have raped and killed more than 300 across Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador. Gerald and Charlene Gallego are two American serial killers who terrorized Sacramento, California between 1978 and 1980. They murdered 10 victims, mostly teenagers, most of whom they kept as sex slaves before killing them. As these killers and hundreds of others around the world were going strong, some were just getting started. 1978 saw the beginning of Jeffrey Dahmer's reign of terror as he committed his first murder. Orange County killer Gerald Parker raped and murdered five of his six victims in California. 
The incredibly cruel serial rapist and murderer Philip Carl Yablonski killed the first of his five victims, which was the mother of his daughter. Britain's second most prolific killer, Dennis Nielsen, on the other side of the pond, killed his first victim, which was a 14-year-old boy. The butcher of Rostov, or Red Ripper, Andre Chikatilo, slaughtered his first victim. He would go on to kill more than 50 more women and children in the Soviet Union until his capture 12 years later. The Connecticut River Valley killer started his grisly reign. He would kill again and again until 1987, never being arrested or even being identified. In addition to all of these serial killers and so many more in 1978, it was also a year that Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, started his bombing campaign. Religious cult leader Jim Jones led more than 900 people to their deaths in a mass suicide in Guyana. In addition to that, his members also killed a congressman, three journalists, and a defecting cult member. So the question remains, why were there so many serial killers in the 1970s? And over the years, there have been many theories as to why this has happened. One theory is because of World War II and these veterans came home with PTSD, which was never treated. The effects of this led to their children raised with less than suitable environments. Another theory suggests that it is an increase in violence in shows and coverage of wars. Some have suggested that the economy may have played a factor in it. Others suggest that increased media coverage of serial killers caused others to want to attempt killing like the BTK killer did, for instance. One other theory is that law enforcement started better record keeping and that led to what was perceived as an increase. Regardless, there was an absolute increase in the number of serial killers in the 1970s and for some strange reason, 1978 seemed to be the peak of it all. Do you have a theory as to why this happened? Let us know in the comments below. As always, I thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.
Cause I'm a true psychopath When you lost, take your trust That's me That's so sick